Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Arctic Thunder is a biannual air show and show of force demonstration held at Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson in Anchorage, Alaska. Attendees can get the chance to see a wide variety of military aircraft performing aerial acts, takeoffs, and landings. It's also one of the few places you might see the massive C-5 Galaxy operating alongside an F-22 Raptor. Aside from the fact that they are both designed by Lockheed, these two aircraft seem to have very little in common. Of course, both the F-22 and the C-5 are extremely important to the United States Air Force's overarching mission, just in very different ways. First introduced back in 1970, the C-5 Galaxy is a military transport aircraft designed for intercontinental airlift operations. The massive plane is nearly 250 feet long and boasts a wingspan of around 222 feet. Its incredible cargo bay is roughly 121 feet by 19 feet wide, with a 13-foot ceiling. This allows the Galaxy to haul up to 281,000 pounds worth of equipment over distances of 7,000 nautical miles. This translates into around 73 troops, 36 standard pallets, vehicles, or even tanks. The F-22 Raptor is an air superiority fighter, first introduced back in 2005. With its stealth capabilities and advanced avionics, the F-22 remains one of the most state-of-the-art aircraft in the U.S. arsenal. It is also one of the most expensive, which forced the military to cut its original order from 750 to just 187. Still, the Raptor is an incredible aircraft with a top speed of around 1,500 miles per hour and a range of around 1,600 nautical miles. Due to the sheer amount of stress put on its landing gear, engines, and other components, the C-5 requires a wide range of regular maintenance. This is typically performed by teams specializing in the aircraft's different systems. This maximizes the condition of the aircraft without keeping it out of commission for too long. The Air Force reports that all C-5s are on an eight-year scheduled maintenance timeline, with program depot maintenance every 96 months. Meanwhile, the F-22's capabilities make it a standout among pilots, but the aircraft has earned a reputation as being rather difficult to maintain. For instance, each aircraft requires a three-week packaged maintenance plan every 300 flight hours. Much of this has to do with keeping up the stealth coatings and ensuring all components are lubricated and free of corrosion. All in all, the C-5 is a workhorse, while the F-22 necessitates a more delicate approach from its maintenance crew.
Despite its age, the U.S. military plans to keep some of its newer C-5s flying until at least 2040. This not only requires an extensive amount of maintenance, but also a commitment to pre- and post-flight evaluations. Indeed, preparing a C-5 for flight is an arduous process that requires close communication between ground crews, maintenance teams, and flight crews. The plane features a number of complex systems that need to be properly evaluated before takeoff. And it takes time to warm up the plane's four giant GE TF-39 turbofan engines. Much like the aircraft itself, getting the F-22 in the air is all about speed. When scrambled without notice, the Raptor can become airborne in around 10 minutes, depending on whether it's already fueled. The F-22 also has an automated start process, which can get the plane ready to fly in about two minutes. F-22s can also participate in hot pit refueling, which is when ground crews fill the plane's tanks while its engines are still running. This can drastically cut down on the time the F-22 spends on the ground before continuing on its mission. Despite its powerful engines, the C-5 requires around 5,400 feet of runway in order to complete its takeoff run. To land, the aircraft needs at least 3,600 feet. This greatly reduces the plane's ability to operate from smaller runways or austere locations. Of course, with a max takeoff weight of 840,000 pounds, such limitations are to be expected. But once in the air, the C-5 is surprisingly fast, reaching speeds of 532 miles per hour. However, its rate of climb is just 2,100 feet per minute, which is the opposite end of the spectrum from the Raptor. In fact, the F-22 can climb at about 38,000 feet per minute, performing vertical takeoffs and reaching its 65,000 foot ceiling in a fraction of the time. This makes it particularly well suited to missions requiring speed and versatility. The F-22 is a multi-role jet, capable of participating in ground attacks, electronic warfare, and signals intelligence. Still, its primary function is as an air superiority fighter. To perform that mission, the Raptor is incredibly well armed. It boasts three internal weapons bays, which help it to maintain its sleek, radar-minimizing profile. For longer missions, the F-22 has external hardpoints for added fuel tanks, missiles, and even bombs. As you can see here, members of the 477 Aircraft Maintenance Squadron are loading an F-22 with AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles and AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air -air missiles. The former are short-range heat-seeking missiles that have been a staple in air combat since the mid-1950s. The latter is a radar-based weapon that boasts high-explosive, blast-fragmentation warheads. They have been in use since the early 1990s and remain an extremely effective option for a wide range of modern aircraft.
The footage also features the GBU-32 Joint Direct Attack Munition, which are kits attached to unguided bombs that turn them into highly accurate smart weapons. Here, one can see the F-22 firing an AIM-9 Sidewinder during an exercise. Thanks to its internal storage base, the aircraft does not have to store all of its munitions on wing hardpoints. This contributes to the F-22's reduced radar profile while allowing it to conceal its offensive capabilities from potential attackers. Each Sidewinder weighs nearly 200 pounds and measures just shy of 10 feet long. Despite its age, it remains the most widely used air-to-air -air missile in the Western world, with more than 29 nations employing it in their fighters. Like all U.S. military pilots, F-22 squadrons are required to undergo dogfight and aerial maneuver training. This term refers to an aerial battle in which fighter aircraft engage each other at close range. Using different weapons and maneuvers, one will attempt to destroy the other. Aircraft will also utilize various countermeasures during these battles, including flares, which help misdirect heat-seeking missiles, and chaff, which can protect aircraft against radar-guided weapons. The F-22 is, in many ways, the successor to the F-15, with a smaller delta wing design and capabilities. Both can execute 9G maneuvers and have a similar top speed. Still, the Raptor has the advantage thanks to its advanced stealth capabilities, which allow it to engage other aircraft before it's even seen. Of all the capabilities the F-22 Raptor has, one of the most important is also the most common. That is its ability to refuel in mid-air. Indeed, even the most advanced aircraft is useless if it can't get to the fight. Aerial refueling allows the F-22 to extend its ferry and combat range considerably, especially when external fuel tanks are added. This means a squadron of F-22s can patrol an area covering thousands of square miles without having to refuel constantly. Thank you. You looking for right wing? Or? I'll just go to left wing. I'll have my three and four rejoin to the right. Copy that. Five. The F-22 Raptor is setting a high bar for the future of United States military fighters. Much like the C-5, these two aircraft represent some of the biggest advances in technology and avionics in history. And they're working together to usher in a new era of military might. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.